Thank you, Bill, and welcome. Welcome to Uni of Orange County on this beautiful day, which is the last Sunday before Christmas. And so we're so glad that you've all decided to join us. We like to begin with our vision and our mission statement. Our vision statement here at Uni of Orange County is centered in divine love, we joyfully co-create a world that works for all. And our mission is to awaken, inspire, and transform lives. And we are happy to have with us today Bill at Piano. And I love your Christmas hat and vest. It's just so cool. And we have Tom on sound and John doing the streaming. And Christopher is on camera. And we have the wonderful and beautiful Shanice doing our daily meditation, daily word and meditation. And so we're glad that you're all here joining us. Um, we are having a Christmas Eve service, obviously, December 24th, Christmas Eve at 6.30. It's going to be on Zoom. So I know that Christmas may be a look a little bit different this year, but it's still an opportunity to come together and to be part of the Christmas Eve story. So we hope that you join us. The ID will also be on our webpage, and we'll send out a reminder by email the day before. So please come, invite your family and friends and anybody else you think that might like a little bit of Christmas on Christmas Eve. And um, we know that you love Unity of Orange County, and we're so grateful for all the gifts that have been given to us through our unfunded fundraiser and we are still um, if you haven't given it you can send your ticket money which is $25 you can buy one ticket or four tickets or as many tickets as you want to Uni of Orange County you can do it on the web you can do it through texting and you can mail it in and we're just grateful for all that are supporting our non-event event and there's not too many chance times you get to not go somewhere and be part of something. So we're glad that you're doing that. And we have a lot of great things happening in the new year. We have a new class beginning on January 6th. It's based on the book Living Originally by Robert Brummett. And I just want to say he was one of my teachers when I was in ministerial school. And he is just the most fascinating. He's just a great guy. And every book he's written has been wonderful. So I know this class is going to be just a great class. He also used to lead our insight meditation retreats that we had when I was at school. So he's just got this wonderful presence about him and it comes through in his writings. And we're also going to begin in January, the first Sunday in January at 11 o'clock. We are going to begin the quest. We're going to have a spiritual discussion on the first and third Sundays of the month. And it is going to be on the quest, which can be, the book can be received on Amazon or unity.org. So I'd like to say this about the quest. I meant to bring the book. So one of the requirements, I don't know if it's that way any now, but one of the requirements requirements to be a unity licensed teacher and to be a minister in the past was you had to have taken the quest. The quest is a book, it's 52 lessons, and it is everything you want to know about unity and what unity believes. If you're wondering, what does unity think about Jesus? What does unity think about, you know, virgin birth? What is whatever, this book covers it. And so Twice a month, we're going to have a discussion on the topics, and it is a great way to really learn what unity believes about these. Because I'm sure people have asked you, well, what is unity about? What does unity believe? And you're like, okay, um, we love each other, and we love to hug, and we're very friendly, and we're very spiritual, but I can't really tell you exactly what it is we believe. So um, this is a great class. The quest is, and it's so simply written. It really should have been called Unity for Dummies. So um, it's just a great book. So make sure that you're part of that. So we're going to be having a lot of things going on in the new year. And so now I would like to introduce Shanice for our daily word and our meditation. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning, Unity. The daily word for Sunday, December 20th, 2020, is joy. Joy dawns in my grateful heart. Joy dawns in my grateful heart. Joy to the world, the carol echoes the joyous message proclaiming the Messiah's birth. Today, I feel this same triumphant joy awakening in me. I may have endured a long and cumbersome journey on the way to discover the joy that is alive in me, the truth of me as a spiritual being. I may have spent years denying my spiritual identity, thinking that fulfillment, wholeness, and abundance were for others and not for me. Now, as I've made the Advent journey, I have kindled my faith, felt the tranquility and comfort of peace, and received the soothing touch of deep and abiding love. Those gifts have led me to understand with deep gratitude that joy is mine to know, feel, and to live. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. From Luke chapter 2, verse 10. And so I invite you to get comfortable wherever you are for a time of meditation. And breathing in and breathing out we find ourselves in the holy ground of being. Breathing in, we feel, I am in God. Breathing out, we feel, God is in me. So I just invite you to softly close your eyes. There is much joy to be had. There is much to do in this season, but for now, there is nowhere to go, there is nowhere to be, but here, but now. So breathing, I invite you to relax. Feel all of the weight bearing down into the earth, holding you upright, comforting you. Feel the warmth of light of being streaming down in through you. And breathing in, we feel, I am in God, breathing out. God is within me. And we're just going to quiet the outer noise of the day waking world. And we're going to journey to the east, to the place of spiritual aspiration. We're going to follow that star that's guided us from the past and into eternity. So just breathing, relaxing into the holy ground where you are. I want you to feel that bright, brilliant, radiant light that's beckoning to you from afar. There is a sprinkling of stars on the fabric of royal blue sky. It is night, it is evening, and we are waiting. A light that shines streaming down to you, it calls, come, come. And you follow its light, and you step forward. Closer into the light. It calls, come, come. You journey on, away from the noise, to find a place in the sacred place to commune with this calling. It's so brilliant. It sings to you, streams into you calls to you and 
you want to go closer. And here we are, bathed in its light, right above you. It calls to you, I have a gift to bear. Will you receive it? Will you open your heart? Will you open your soul and look with new eyes? In this place of the most sacred, receive your gift, and we will rest bathed in the light of this star. Patiently, unwrapping the gift of this presence. And so we rest in the silence and receive that gift that is shining, wanting to be illumined through you. And we go within and we listen, bathed in the light. As we prepare to return to this space, to this light of day, although we may journey to follow the star, it asks us to shine right where we are. Take this gift, live this gift, shine your light. So it is.
Thank you, Bill, for that beautiful music. And thank you, Shanice, for that wonderful meditation. Really enjoyed it. And today is, we are lighting the candle for joy. It is the last Sunday of Advent. And so, you know, COVID or no COVID, the question is, are you joyful? Do you feel joy in your life right now? You know, the difference between joy and happiness is happiness usually is based on something outside of us. You know, if the weather is good, we're happy. If uh, some a friend calls us, we're happy. If we get a raise at work, we're happy. But joy, joy comes from within. Joy is not based on outside circumstances. So you can't say, well, I would be joyous if it wasn't for COVID. No, that has nothing at all to do with joy. In John 15, 10 to 11, Jesus says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So what Jesus is saying is his joy has to be within us. It's not something that happens because everything in our world just happens to be going perfectly. Joy is something that we express from within. You see it a lot with children because children are naturally joyous. They're born joyous. And then what often happens is the adults take that joy away from kids because very often we're brought up in a home where maybe we're told, oh, don't do that or don't. Don't, don't get that excited. Or When I was um, little, I was very short, like I'm really tall now. But um, I was shorter then than I am short now. And so um, everyone around me was much bigger. And so I talked really loud for a little person. And people would say to me all the time, you know, calm down, calm down, lower your voice, you're talking too loud, you know, bring that energy in. And I'm like, but I want to really spread this energy. And everyone's going, shh, shh. So what happens after a while, when you do that to a child, is they begin to shut down. They begin to turn within because the adults are telling them to do this. But that's not natural. Natural for us is to do that, to express ourselves, to be open, to be joyous and all of that. And, um, but the world doesn't see it that way. So Charles Loomis said, I am bigger than anything that can happen to me. All these things, sorrow, misfortune, and suffering are outside my door. I am in the house and I have the key. So we have the key, not the outside stuff. We have the key. And so what do we do to bring joy back into our lives? So one of the greatest ways to bring joy back into our life is through service. Something happens when we do something for someone else. It can be a little thing or it could be a big thing. But when we do something for someone else, no matter how they feel about it, we feel good. Service is, the, to me, one of the biggest things I can do. Leo Tolstoy said that joy can be real only if people look upon their life as a service and have a definite object in life outside themselves and their personal happiness. So when we have our service, we're thinking of other people. We're not thinking of ourselves. You know, we tend as human beings to be selfish, self-centered, filled with self-pity, that self, 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 self. And when we're into that self, we can't really experience joy. You know, one of the things that I've always discovered is that if I'm really into myself and feeling filled with self-pity and all that kind of stuff, the thing that gets me out of it is picking up the phone and calling somebody and finding out how they're doing. And maybe just listening as that person goes on about all their woes. But the funny thing happens. At the end of the call, I don't feel bad anymore. They may feel terrible, but I'm feeling great. Because that's what service does. Service gets us out of ourselves. So I found this story, and it's written by a man by the name of um, Taren Tenet Morell. And it's called True Christmas Joy. "'Twas the day before Christmas a long time ago, and our beautiful earth 
was all covered with snow. Down the street with their sleighs came two manly boys who paused at the window to look at the toys. Already two others were looking in, but their faces were sad and their clothes old and thin. And the little one said, is it because we're so poor that Santa doesn't come to our house anymore? The older one patted his wee brother's head and hugged him up closely as softly he said, oh, maybe he will come tonight, little Tim, if we ask on our prayers for the Lord to send him. The little face smiled as the boy saw a tear in the eye of the one who quelled little Tim's fear. Then slowly and sadly, the waifs went their way to the place they call home, where that night they would pray. The boys with their sleighs followed closely behind, and neither one spoke but in each childish mind. A beautiful thought said as plain as could be, if I share with those poor boys what Santa brings me. When the two reached their home, to the father they ran and eagerly told them their unselfish plan. He was proud of his boys, who now felt that same love that sent our dear Savior from his home above. Next morning, still filled and thrilled with their beautiful thought, they scampered downstairs to see what Sansa brought. And they, with the help of their father and mother, selected the presents for Tim and his brother. And as the first light of dawn came into view, the two went their way with the toys bright and new and crept very quietly up to the door where they'd seen the boys enter the evening before. As they hurried back home to their own Christmas joys, they could not even dream how the other two boys, on finding that Santa had really been there, sent their joy to the one who had answered their prayer. That night, when the Santas were ready for bed, with the hand of their father on each curly head. So even children can understand the importance of doing something for someone else, of doing something unselfish, of sharing our gifts with others, because that is what the season is all about. You know, it's a season of hope. It's a season of hope, especially this year, that the hope that next year will be better. It's a season of hope that at the time of Jesus' birth, that this child was being born, which was going to change the world which was going to be the Prince of Peace and was going to bring peace to a world at that time when there was very little peace. And it's a season of love because when we give of service, we're giving our love. You know, it's hard to be of service to someone and not come from a feeling of love. So when we have hope and peace and love, we cannot help but have joy. And there's that joy that comes from within. I had a friend once who said he was traveling and he was at a McDonald's and there was a little kid there who wanted a milkshake and he said, and the father bought a milkshake for the little girl and she did. He called it the happy dance. I don't know if you've ever seen kids do that. You know, they jump up and down and they're clapping their hands and they're so excited because they have all this joy within them and they don't know what to do with it. So... Um, I want to thank a uh, friend, Kathy, who sent me a video, and it's called um, Oh, a Puppy. And what it is, it is children being surprised with a puppy. And this is what joy looks like. Open the box. Oh, my God, it's a puppy! A puppy? Oh, my God, it's a puppy!
That's my Christmas wish for you, that you feel that joy, that you feel the joy that a child feels when they first get their first puppy, the joy that just comes out in tears and smiles and laughter, and it doesn't matter what else is going on in your world, because it just comes from within. And maybe that joy is from realizing that it is the Christmas season. And it is a time of hope and peace and love. And it is a time when not only was Jesus born, but the Christ within each of us is born. So that we may feel that joy that Jesus talked about. So I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. And take a few deep breaths. Within each of us is an unborn possibility of abounding joy. It is a spark of spirit that one can never can smother but cannot extinguish. So my hope for you this holiday season is to take a moment to go within, to allow hope and peace and love fill your heart and your spirit. And then to truly realize there is so much to be joyful for. No matter what is going on around us. Christmas is a time for us to remember the Christ that was born in Jesus is also born in us. If we only take the time to be still and to connect. And as we do, we will be filled with a joy that overflows and a joy that we cannot help but spread to the world around us. So that truly this Christmas season, no matter what is going on in your world, 
it will be the best Christmas ever, for it will be a time to remember not the shopping and the gifts and even the visiting others, but what Christmas really means. And when we remember that, we will truly be celebrating the spirit of Christmas. And so it is. Amen. Bill, that was wonderful. Got me in the Christmas spirit. If you're not already in the Christmas spirit, so um, you know we have to take, we have to make an effort sometimes to do something. Um, we can't just expect sometimes everything to happen for us. So if you are not feeling in the Christmas spirit, I would advise you to go do something to make you feel like in the Christmas spirit. Try making some cookies or bring, drop it off at a neighbor's house or just wish everybody that you come in contact with Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. Do something, just get out of yourself. It's that time of year, we need to get out of ourselves. And one way we get out of ourselves is through remembering the principles that we believe here at Unity. And we have five basic principles. And the first is God is all good Together, God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. And number two is, I am naturally good because God's divinity is in me and in everyone. And three, I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and believe. So that means the Christmas spirit is up to us, not up to somebody else. And through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. And five, I do and give my best by living the truth that I know. I make a difference. And we do make a difference. We make a difference just by smiling to someone. We make a difference to this community with your gifts. We would not be here without them. And we truly appreciate it. So you can text us your g gifts. You can mail them in. You can put them on our website. You can go to our app. We try and make it easy for you. Whatever way you give your gifts, before you give them, I invite you to take a moment and pray over them, as we're going to do right now, as we pray our offering prayer. Together, Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. 
and we are grateful for you. And we hope that you join us Christmas Eve. And if you have trouble with Zoom, or if you're like, I can't do Zoom, Zoom is too hard, I want to be there, but I don't know what to do with Zoom, I invite you to send me an email with your phone number, and I will call you, and I will help you get on Zoom, because Christmas Eve is a time when we should be celebrating the birth of Jesus. So you can email me at minister at unity of Orange County at g dot gmail dot no, no. minister at uni of Orange County dot org. And um, I will be happy to talk to you and explain to you how to get on Zoom. I don't want anyone to not be a part of it because they feel they don't know how to do it. It's very easy. I know a lot of non-tech people that can do it. So um, you just need someone to tell you how. So please let me know if you don't know how to do it. And so I hope to see you all on Christmas Eve. One of the event reasons we're doing it on Zoom rather than like we do it on YouTube is so that we can see you and you can see us and you can be a part of it as if you were here and you can partake in it as if you were here. And you will need a candle. We sent out some blessing bags and if you have one in it was a candle. If you didn't get that, all you need is any kind of candle and make sure you have a match. If you don't have a candle, a flashlight will work. If you don't have a flashlight, your phone will work. Anything that has any kind of light on it will work so that you could be part of the candle lighting ceremony. So I hope to see you uh, Thursday night. And whatever, whether you're there or not, we hope that you have a fabulous Christmas, that you remember what Christmas is about. And so let us close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Have a wonderful holiday. Be safe, be happy, be joyous, and be free. God bless. Mm -hmm.